So, like I said, Nick, this is the meat and potatoes of this unit. If you wrap your brain around this, the next few lessons are simply going to be, I know you haven't thought of this, but this makes sense. I know you haven't thought of this, but this makes sense. These are called Kirchhoff's laws, named after a Russian scientist. I think it was a Russian scientist. Uh, he said, you can solve circuits with two rules. There's a current rule, Kirchhoff's current rule, which I'll abbreviate as KCL, and Kirchhoff's voltage law, which I'll abbreviate as KVL. Kirchhoff's current law is basically a conservation of charge. It says, you know what, inside a circuit, electrons and protons can't vanish. They got to keep moving in a straight line. They can split up, but then they got to come back and meet back together. Or if we go to our ski hill analogy, any skiers that get on the chairlift can't vanish without getting back to the bottom of the mountain. We're not allowed to have missing hikers. That's illegal. It says that at any junction between wires, current flow splits or combines and continues to flow downhill. When the current splits or combines, no charge is lost, so the total flow into the junction equals the total flow out of the junction. That seems very confusing. It's not. What we really say is this. Any current in equals any current out. That seems confusing. It's not. It's easier to show you in a picture. A picture is worth a thousand words. If I have two amps coming in this way and I have one amp flowing in this way at a circuit junction, I must have three amps leaving. That's Kirchhoff's current law. Let's do a bunch. So what you want to imagine, now the analogy is going to break down a tiny bit, Mark, because you can't have 0.75 of a skier. I have 1.75 amps, but I, we'll have decimal skiers. This is the number of skiers on this chairlift. It says, find the unknown currents. How many amps right here? Read to me. 1.75. How many amps right here? 1.75 amps. How many amps right here? One fact. You know how many amps came out of this chairlift battery? 1.75 amps. So there's 1.75 amps here, 1.75 amps here, 1.75 amps here. How many amps right here? 1.75 amps. How many amps here? 1.75 amps. Let's look at the next diagram. I always try and start out at the top, the positive part of the battery. By the way, remember, electrons flow this way, but current flows, we decided from positive to negative. You're going to see by the end of today why it's so much easier to just pretend that we go from positive to negative, even though in real life in Alberta, they like to do current in the opposite direction. I'm going to convince you that they're wrong, Nick. I will. How many amps right here? Follow. How, so how many amps left the battery, by the way? Three amps. Here's a junction. How many amps went this way? 0.8. How many amps must have gone this way? Do the arithmetic, preferably in your head. Zach? 2 2. Must be. Let's continue to follow this path. Follow it, follow it, follow it, follow it, follow it, follow it. What direction is the current flowing right where my eraser is? To the left or to the right? It's got to be going to the left. Oh, and how many amps are right there? Have we come, were there any other junctions between that 2.2 at the top? Then this is still 2.2 amps. They rejoin right here. So how many amps right here? Three. Direction, which way is the current flowing right there? Left. That's downhill. And again, electrons flow in the opposite direction? No. We're going to pretend the protons are moving. It's so much easier. Example two says, show the direction of each current and then find the unknown currents. Until you get good, a habit that I develop is I start at the chair battery, I'm going to say chairlift, at the top, and I say, this is downhill, and I continue now to go skiing. That's downhill, that's downhill, that's downhill, 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 and I guess this is downhill and this is downhill. Otherwise, this wouldn't continue to work. Do I know how many amps 
the total current of this circuit or how many amps were leaving the battery? Not yet. Rachel, how many amps went this way? This way. How many amps went this way? So if I had eight go this way, five go this way, how many amps must have been flowing in? 13, how many amps right here? How many amps right here? How many amps right here? You know what? Rule number one for solving a circuit is going to be, if I can find the total current, I guarantee the circuit will fall apart. And eventually we're gonna make a little ch checklist, a little flow chart. Step one is gonna be, find the total current if you can. How many amps went this way, Mac? How many amps went this way? How many amps went this way? Yep. How about down here, Mac, my friend? Still three? Rob, how about right here? Five. Yep. Keep going, Rob. How about right here? Yep. That's Kirchhoff's law for current. Current can split up and rejoin, but total current never changes. Okay. Let's kick it up a notch. In fact, I think I can make these a little bit bigger. And yeah, that'll work. Uh, I'm going to label, uh, you know what, this way is downhill. Downhill, I guess the current splits up into those three directions. Those are all downhill. Meets up again here. That's downhill, that's downhill, 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 downhill. That's the direction of the current. Did they tell me the total current in this circuit Oh, they did? Where? You're right. What's the total current in this circuit? Looking right here, this five, I notice everybody joined back together right there. Everybody who split up, rejoined right here. This branch also has the total current. So I can now go, hey, I got five amps leaving the battery. And you know what? If I know total current, the question's going to fall apart. How many amps? How many amps right there? What did you say? Two? I disagree. 2.5, right? 0.5 to 2.5. It's got to add to five in this particular example. Then they rejoin. There's my five. Follow it, follow it, follow it. Oh, we split up again. How many amps right here? Three. All I can do is add more wires, give you more junctions. I really can't make it more complicated. You split up, you come back together. Sort of like a creepy teenage relationship. You know what? All of you probably thought of the same couple or same. Anyway, okay, whatever. <laughs> we know the one. They keep splitting up. They keep getting back together. Yeah. Uh, next one. Did they tell me total current? Yeah, then you know what? This is going to fall apart. What is the total current in this circuit? 4.5 amps. It's going to split up somewhere maybe, but okay. Um, okay, Rafi, how many amps here? Now, by the way, you'll notice this time I got a bit lazy. I didn't label all the downhills. You can if you want, Grayson. If you get good enough, you may also eventually just be able to visualize it in your head. But if it makes you feel better to put the downhill, 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 down, because I think that's downhill. You can certainly continue to add those. I won't ever take marks for that, off for that. Rafi, how many amps right here? Got to be. Keep going, Rafi. How many amps right here? How many amps down at the bottom here? 3.5 still, because they haven't rejoined. How many amps right here? There you go. How does, uh, how does resistance affect current? Well, it turns out 
We're going to generalize and then get more specific. The amount of flow along a particular path from a junction depends on the resistance of that path. I said that resistance was like the amount of powder. So here we have six amps. Each of these resistances is identical. Do you know how the current's going to split up for two identical resistors? Take a guess. What would make sense? More specific in this example, how many amps and how many amps? Three and three. If one path has more resistance, what can we say about the splitting? Okay, which has the bigger resistor, I1 or I2? I2 has a bigger resistor. You know what? Bigger resistor means deeper powder. You can't get as many skiers on the hill. You're going to have I2 is going to be smaller than I1. It might be 4 amps in the first and 2 amps in the second or five and one. In fact, you can even be more specific. If you happen to know that the resistors are simple ratios of each other, you can relate the currents via the same ratios. Say what? Here's R, this is 2R. This resistor is twice as big as this one. That means this current is gonna be half as big as this one. How can you break six amps up so that this current is half the size of this current? Mark. Now I'll be honest, I hardly ever use that. I'm going to give you a more specific equation. I'm, I use V equals I times R all the time. But for what it's worth, it all comes out of this notion that current splits up and joins back together. Voltage, Kirchhoff's voltage law, or KVO. This, is act this actually comes out of the law of conservation of energy. It says this, any voltage that you lose, you have to gain back if you arrive at the same location as you started. Or you know what? On a mountain, no matter where you start on a mountain, if you end up back where you started from, any height that you gained, you must have lost. Otherwise, how could you end up back at the same height that you started from, the same place that you started from? Because the place that you started from has the same height. It says this, any voltage that you gain has to equal, your voltage gains have to equal your voltage losses. In our, in our ski hill analogy, it says, look, if, Rob, I hook you up, for example, to a 12-volt battery, I better lose 12 volts in the circuit itself because I have to be able to get back down to the ground. This could be 8 volts. How high would this hill, this resistor, have to be? Do the math. 8 volts, that'd be 16 volts. Doesn't work. You can't climb 12 volts and ski down 16 volts. Impossible. Yep. That's Kirchhoff's rule for voltage. Let's try some with actual numbers. A circuit. So, I always tend to start, Nate, at the battery. Nate, my friend, I know you just joined us, but we will be good. How many volts are we gaining going through this battery? So right now, remember I said voltage is like a height. How high am I? Right here, 20 volts high. How high am I? Still 20 volts because I haven't gone down a hill yet. I'm skiing on that flat area that takes me to the first run. How high am I right here? 20 volts. How high am I right here? 20 volts. Nate, how high am I still right here? How many volts do I lose going through here, Nate? How many volts do I lose? So how high am I right here? 12. Now, look up, my friend. 
They didn't tell me this, except how high did I end up? So how high am I right there? That's the bottom, zero. So how many volts must I have lost going through that final resistor? Has to be 12. Has to be. This is Kirchhoff's voltage law. This is Kirchhoff's voltage law. Mr. V, how many volts do I gain going through the battery? So how many volts, how high am I right here? How high am I right here? Still 10. Now, there's a junction. What we're doing is two people or more are skiing, and they're going to shake hands, and then they're going to meet up. One's going to go down this mountainside part. The other person's going to go down this trail. Okay, how high are we right here still? Because we haven't gone down a hill yet. In fact, we're 10 volts here, uh, 10 volts here. Let's go down the middle run. How high is this hill? Don't know, but where was I able to end up? So how high was I at the bottom of the hill? How many volts did I lose? Must have. That looks like a seven, Mr. Duick. How high is that other hill? Now, this notion of labeling everywhere clutters up our diagram. So what we're going to start to do, Josh, we're going to label the battery, we're going to label the resistors, but we're not going to label the tops and the bottoms. Of, uh, too cluttery. And I'm going to just know that, oh, if it's through a resistor, it's a loss. I'll know it's negative. I'm not going to write the negative. I'll, I'm losing. And if it's through a battery, it's a gain. So I'm only on this one, only going to label the drops. Ready, Josh? How many volts do we gain? 12. How many volts do we lose going through this resistor, this first one? Leaving? Okay. Going down here, could I get back to zero? How many volts must I lose? What's the drop going through this resistor? Has to be. Uh, also, what were we at here? We still had four volts to get rid of at this location. Going through this resistor, can I get to the bottom? How many volts must this resistor be? Yeah. Now this bugs kids because kids are going to say, wait a minute, Mr. Duick, 8 plus 4 plus 4 equals 16, not 12. Kirchhoff's rule says this. If you go in any closed loop, it'll be 12 plus and 12 minus. If I go in any closed loop, it'll be 12 plus and 12 minus. What I'm not going to do is ski uphill. So, Mr. Duick, this is a closed loop as well. Ah, you're skiing uphill. You can't ski uphill. I skied uphill right on this section here to get back up. Okay. This is almost fun. We're skiing, Naomi. We're skiing. Naomi, how high is this hill? 60 volts. Everyone, all of us as a group are going down this hill. How high, what do we lose going through this resistor? How many volts? Leaving? 45, it's 60 minutes in an hour. You've done math with 60s all your life, okay. Um, how high is this voltage drop? Read it to me. So. 45, we all lose 18 if we, by, by the way, we're going to split up. Some of us are going to, some of us are going to go this way. Some of us are going to go this way. I'll do the easier one. because So we lose 18. How high are we then right here, folks? Sorry? 27. Everyone goes down this hill. Did we end up on the bottom at the ground? How high must this hill, how many volts must we have lost going through this resistor? We had 27 to get rid of. Now here's another good trick. Naomi, coming back to you. How high was this hill? How many volts did we lose? 
Now, we shook hands, split up, but we met up back here. If you went here and you lost 18 volts, what does my total voltage loss have to be here? It's got to be 18. Otherwise, how could we split up and meet up? How many volts did I lose going through here? How many volts must I lose going through here? Has to be. So don't try adding up all of the voltages. It'll add to way more than 60. I don't care. On any path, you gain 60 going through the battery, you'll lose 60 going through the chairlift as long as it's a closed loop and you're always skiing downhill. By the way, eventually I'll show you, we can ski uphill mathematically and I'll show you how we deal with that, but not yet. So there are two con useful conclusions to draw. For any complete loop, current uh, voltage up has to equal voltage loss and no matter which way, no matter which path you take, if you split up and meet up, you must have gone through the same drop, the same voltage drop overall. To see this, sometimes it's helpful at first to redraw the circuit so that all resistors are pointing downhill. For example, consider the previous circuit 5A where we all went through here and then we split up. You can kind of visualize it as big chairlift. Everybody went down the same hill and then some people went to the right, some people went to the left. But you can see we must have all lost the same height, the same voltage drop going through there. Otherwise, how the heck could we meet up at the bottom? 5B could be redrawn as big chairlift, 60 volts. Everyone loses 15 volts. Uh, you know what? Some of you were better skiers. You went down the one big hill, and this one big hill was 18 volts. Uh, I'm not so good a skier. I went through the two smaller hills. One hill was 10 volts. One hill was 8 volts. Although I still, Rob, did lose 18 volts. How do I know I had to lose 18 volts? Well, if we shook hands and met up, we must have gone through the same height drop. Oh, and then I forgot to add the 27 volt at the end. It was 27 at the end, right? I think. I forgot to put that resistor on there. Oh, no, it is. Never mind. Put it right there. Yeah, that makes sense. 27 volts right there. Duh. I'll be honest, I'm not a fan of redrawing. Too much work. There will be very complicated ones that will start to redraw. You can redraw them if you want to, but Grayson, I'm going to really nudge you into saying, just kind of visualize which way downhill is. Draw arrows, but use the diagram they gave you. It's less work. It's me being lazy. Example six says, write equations relating the voltage drops. Not gonna. We're going to jump into a bit more. Okay, if there are several resistors along a path, you'll lose a bit of voltage going through each hill. So how many volts is this battery giving me to start out, Grayson? Maybe I'll lose 10 and 20. Don't write that down because it's wrong. Or I could lose 12 and 18. Wait, 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 wait. It says each of these has identical resistors. Yes? And what can you tell me about the current in each of these? The same or different? It's got to be the same because here is I total goes there, goes there. So this has the same I. This has the same I, and they have the same R. They have the same R. Hey, is there an equation that relates I and R and voltage? What, Zach? So what can you tell me about each of these voltage drops? If the resistors are the same and the currents are the same, the voltage drops are the? More specific, since I have a 30-volt source, how many volts must each of these be? Has to be. Has 
has to be. Now, I'm not going to use that approach very often. I'm, I'm going to use V equals I times R all the time. But for what it's worth, okay, if you have identical resistors, they'll each take half the voltage. What can you tell me in example B about the current in each resistor? Same or different? Why same? Because there's current is skiers. Every skier goes through both of them. So same I. Same I. Uh, what can you say about I times big R versus I times little r? Which one will have a bigger voltage? Bigger resistance is going to use up more voltage. Larger V, smaller V. In fact, you can use the ratio trick here as well. If I have a resistor of 2R and I have a resistor of R, again, they same have the same current because there are no junctions on this hill. The top resistor is going to use twice as much voltage as the bottom resistor. If I have 30 volts, how can I divide that into a 2 to 1 ratio? Twenty volts and ten volts. Let's put it all together. I wrote, although it's helpful at first to label voltages everywhere, from now on, we're only going to label voltages and currents on the battery and on the resistors. Otherwise, our diagram gets way too cluttered. So here we go. Solve. Find the unknown voltage drops, currents, and resistors. First thing we always look for, first thing we always look for is IT, total current. If you can find total current, I guarantee this question is going to fall apart. Did they tell you the total current in this circuit? Start at the battery and ask, is there any section of wire where every skier, where all the amps had to go through and you know the amperage? Right here. What's the total? current of this circuit? What's the total current of this circuit? Really? Four amps. Four amps. Let's try that again. What's the total current of this circuit? Four. How do I know? Because how many amps are in this resistor? And that's, they had nowhere else to go. So you know what? I'm going to go like this. Oh, by the way, how many do I know here? Two, you know what? If you know two, you know four. What's the resistance of that? You're going to use V equals I times R, and you're going to use P equals VI. What's the resistor of that? Please, someone crunch it for me. Have I lost you guys? Get the R by itself, please. So it's going to be V over I, 6 divided by 4. What is it? 1.5 ohms. Hey, I'm just curious. How many watts of power does this resist? You know what? Let's pretend it's a light bulb. How many watts is this light bulb? Oh, ohms, not amps, Mr. Duick. Thank you. How many watts is this light bulb in your head? 24, V times I. Okay. To solve this, let's tackle currents first. How many amps are there in this circuit grand total? What's our total current? Four amps. So how many amps must be here? Don't say four. Look at the secret. Look at the circuit. Okay, so Rafi, right? It breaks up. See it? One amp. Is there anywhere else that I know two pieces of information? Say no. OK, so my first thing, always look for total current. Second thing, anywhere I know two, I know four. Third thing, I go skiing. Really, we get to go skiing? Yes, Naomi, we get to go skiing. Say, so ready, Naomi? How high are we starting out? What's our voltage? Ski with me, ski with me, ski with me. What do we lose going down this hill? 
leaving? 12, right? Right? Ski with me, ski with, let's go down this one. Ski with, do we know how high this hill is? Say no. Ski with me, ski with me. But could that hill get us to the bottom? How high, how many volts must we lose? How many volts? What do we lose here? Leaving? Leaving how much? 12. So how many volts must we lose? 12. Is that what you said the first time? I don't think you, you said 12 the first time? I'm sorry, I couldn't read your lips. 12. Hey, I know two. You know what that means? I know four. What's the resistor? How many watts? Calculate that, please, on your own. Oh, I can do it in my head. Four ohms? Right, R equals V over I. Oh, and I can do the power in my head. 36 watts. Yes? Okay. Do I know two things in the right-hand resistor? No? Well then, Josh, let's go skiing. How high? What do I lose? Leaving? Going down this hill. Did that get me to the ground as well? How many volts must it have been? Do I know two? Then you know what? I know four things. Uh, 12 ohms? Oh, and 12 watts. So here would be a nice test question. I would give you this circuit, and I would say to you, what's the brightest bulb? My mom says I'm the brightest bulb. No. What's the brightest bulb here? Top, middle, or right-hand resistor? Which is the brightest bulb? Middle. 32 watts. Okay. This is Kirchhoff's laws. By the way, we could have, jo uh, Josh, I had you to find yours ski all the way around again, but you could have said, hey, since we shook hands and met up, if this is 12 volts, that's also got to be 12 volts, and you'll pick up that. That's a quicker shortcut. B. First thing I look for, total current. Is there any way they told, anywhere they told me total current? Can I figure out the total current? Yeah? Now remember, this way is downhill, 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 downhill. What's the total current in this particular circuit? Mark. 2.5. See it? We got 1.5 in one hill one and another hill, and they're joining up right here to 2.5 amps, 2.5. So you know what? And I've told you, if you know total current, the question's going to fall apart. It is going to fall apart. I also notice in that top resistor, I know two things. Well, then I know four things. Find the resistance, find the power. This one will be probably decimals. Well, I can do the power in my head. It's going to be 42 plus... 11.5, is the power of 53 point, no, 52 point, I think it's 52.5 watts, is it not? Or am I, yeah? Okay, can I divide 21 by 2 point? Sure I can. Hang on, I can do this in my head. Because dividing by 0.25 would be timesing by 4, uh, 8.4? Who the man? Is there anywhere else they told me two things? Then Jordan, let's go skiing! So Jordan, how high is this hill that you're getting off of? Okay, everyone goes down this hill. What do we lose going down this hill? What do we lose going down? 21, leaving. Okay, boom, boom, that took us to the ground. How high? How many volts do we lose? By the way, how many volts do I lose in the right-hand resistor? Also 14 because we shook hands and met up. Do I know two? I know four. Find the power. Find the resistance. Find the power. Find the resistance. Uh, power, oh, I can do that. Resistance, oh, I can do that as well. Power. 
Resistance, ooh, dividing by 1.5, that's a little yuckier. That's dividing by 3 over 2, which is the same as times by 2, divided by 3, 28 divided by 3, ugh, it's going to be a, a repeating. 6.67 uh, 6, 6, 6 ohms? Am I right? For the right hand? I'm doing it in my head. Am I wrong? Oh, you know what? I divided the 21. That was dumb. It's the 14. 14 divided by 1.5? 9.3. I divided 21. 9.3 ohms. Don't do that, Mr. Duke. Hey, what's the brightest bulb? My mom says I'm the brightest bulb. No, what's the brightest bulb here? I think the uh, 21 volt resistor, right? 52.5 watts. All I can do is give you a little less information or add a few more wires. You guys want to try C on your own? I'll do it up here. You can look up if you get stuck. First thing you want to look for is did they tell you total current? I don't think they did here. Then go skiing and see if there's anywhere that you know two things. divided by 8 is uh, 0.625 and oh uh, oh that's a bright bulb uh, 200 uh, 210 and 30 let me know if I'm wrong I'm doing all this in my head and if you didn't get one of these you can ask Oh, power, top one. Uh, oh, that I can do. Mickey, did you get that okay, or do you want me to do it? <gasps> Whose phone was that? Oh, excellent. Naomi, was that okay? I, I, can, I can do this if you guys want. Was there any ones you're wondering how I got? I can do it. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, you, you're going to find you're doing loops and loops. And, and that's why I said, Josh, these are kind of like jigsaw puzzles. I, I really like these as little nerd brain teasers, to be perfectly frank. Uh, let's try D to get, oh, we've got D, we've got E. Excellent. Uh, did they tell me total current? Let's do D together. Did they tell me total current anywhere in D? Oh, they did. What's the total current in this circuit? Psst. What's the total current in D? They did tell me. By the way, easiest way to find total current, start at the tip of the battery and see if there's any junctions between you and the first resistor. There is, Zach, what's the total current? Five amps. So, are you ready? Let's fill in as many currents as we can. Zach, how many amps went right here? Right here? Yeah. Five amps. How many amps went this way? Okay. Oh. Do I know two? Oh, yeah. Then you know what? I know four things. In your head, can you rewrite V equals I times R? What? I walked you into that one, but I thought you'd do better. Hey, Zach, how many amps in the right-hand resistor then? has to be. And in the bottom, 5 amps. Telling you, if you ever know the total current, Rafi, it's going to fall apart. <coughs> you got how we got the 3 amps, right? We went, uh, oh, I equals V over R. And this, oh, this is also, Grayson, why I said Ohm's Law and Joule's Law, you'll get sick and tired of looking them up. You'll just start to memorize them because they are almost nice to have at your fingertips like that. Now what? Well, if there's anywhere I know two things, I know four things. How many watts in that middle resistor? Uh, 15 times 3, it's a 45-watt light bulb. 
Is there anywhere else I know two things? Bottom one. And that's going to be very important. How many volts do I lose in that bottom resistor? This is going to be straight I times R. How many volts? Really? 20. Yes? Why is that so helpful? Zach, I'm going to come back to you. Let's go skiing. How high? Don't know. How many volts do I lose there? How many volts do I lose there? And that got me to the bottom. How high must this hill have been if I was able to lose 70 volts? Got to be 35. Say that again. Okay, ready, Raph? How high? I times R. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. And then once we had that, that 70, these three have to add to 70. There's 15. There's 20. That's 35. Leaves me 35 here. Oh, what's the resist? I know two. I know four things up there. What's the resistance of that top resistor? That's going to be V over I. Seven. I always do amps. I don't know why. Uh, and how many watts of power? 35 times 5, 100, 100, 175? No. Yeah? That's a bright bulb. What's left? The right hand resistor. Ready, Rob? Let's go skiing. Actually, you know what? Rob, are we able to shake hands right here, split up, and meet up right here? How high is this hill? How many volts? How many volts must you lose going through here then? Otherwise, there's no way you could meet up at the same height, same voltage, same section of the wire. That looks like a seven, Mr. Duke. You know what? I now know two things. Well, that means I know four. How many watts of power? Uh, resistance is going to be what? 7.5 ohms? And the wattage is going to be 30 watts? Brightest bulb turns out to be the first resistor, which also has, now we can start to say or think about why is it the brightest bulb? Among other things, it's because all of the current flows through it. Wait a minute, all the current flows through the bottom one too, Mr. Duick. Yeah, which one has a higher resistance? The top one, it's going to be a brighter bulb because more heat's generated, more power. Higher resistance. The, uh, I think I've told you these notes were typed in Word 95 for Mac, and the graphics are starting to go haywire. Uh, this line right here should be right there. And in fact, here's what I'm going to cleverly do. Draw color white. Ah, you like that, eh? There. <sighs> Did they tell me total current anywhere? Looking for anywhere that says amps? Nope. Then, is there anywhere I know two? That's where I'm starting. Oh, and you know what? What's the first thing I can figure out in that place that I know two? Not just any amps, that's total current, because isn't that linking straight to the chairlift? Then this question's going to fall apart. So how many amps? Uh, four amps, yes? How many watts? For While we're here, if I know two, I know four. Uh, 32 watts. OK. Ugh. Hmm. Is there anywhere else I know two things? No, then let's go skiing. How many volts high is my chairlift? How many volts do we gain in this circuit? 32. Rachel, how many do I lose here? Leaving. 32 take away 8. Could I go through here and get to the bottom? Could I go through this hill and get to the bottom? Then how many volts must I lose going through that resistor? 
do I know two? I know four things. Uh, current there must be 24 divided by 10, 2.4. And power, 24 times, <coughs> excuse me, 24 times 2.4. Give that one in your, okay, I'll try. It's gonna be 48 plus 9.6. Uh, fifty-seven point six. Yeah. Okay. I'm on a roll today, man. I ate my math wheaties. Is that right? it? Is fifty-seven point six? What? Okay. Do I know two things over here? Now remember, this is downhill. This is downhill. Rob, I'm coming to you. You ready? Rob, my friend, how many volts going down this hill do we lose? How many volts must we lose going down both of these hills grand total? What did I lose here? How high must this hill be? Oh, and how many amps, Rafi, did you say the total current was? How many amps went this way? How many amps went this way? Yep. Do I know two things? Well, then, Grayson, I know four. Uh, these numbers are getting a bit yucky. Well, I'm on a roll. I'm going to try and keep going in my head. Let me see. Well, I can get the power. 16 watts, that I can do. Uh, resistance is going to be 10 divided by 1.6. Oy vey. Do I have any tricks to deal with a 1.6 or a 16 when I'm dividing? Okay, that's going to be 10 divided by 1.6 is the same as uh, 7 over 4. Right, Mr. Duick? No. Uh, I, I hit a wall. Ran out. Sorry to let you guys down. Okay, I hang on. I'm gonna. Okay, bear with me. I gotta pause the video. It's gonna take a while. Is this one 10 ohms? Oh, I should have been able to. No, I'm. I divided the wrong thing. Hang on. Hang on. I divided the 16 again. It's 10 divided by. Oh, good gosh, Duick. 10 divided by 8 over 5. So that's going to be uh, 50 divided by 8. 25 divided by 4. Uh, 12.5 divided by 6.25? Yes. Oh, man. I did all the math right. I just used the wrong input. Okay, the bottom one. Uh, power, uh, what, 14 times 1.6. That's going to be 14 plus, what is 14 times 0.6? 14 times 6 is going to be 80, uh, 14. Huh, it's going to be 14 plus 8.4. 20. 2.4 watts? Yep. Okay, I gotta finish this, man. Uh, oh. Well, at least it's 1.6 amps, and I figured out a trick for that, because 1.6 is 8 over 5. Dividing by 8 over 5 is the same as going times by 5, divide by 8. 14 times 5 is 70, divided by 8 is 35, divided by 4 is 17.5, divided by 2 is... <sighs> Eight point seven five. Yeah. Oh boy, I didn't remember those answers. I was I was doing the math this time. Oh, I feel pretty good about that. <sighs> Go, haven't gone this far. I got to try and do the rest. Oh, you know what? Great using principles of physics right to explain questions on your test are light bulb questions. I might say to you, oh, suppose the light bulb resistance in this is doubled. Which bulb is brighter now? Or suppose I pull this light bulb out of the circuit completely. Which bulb is brighter now? So I wrote down here, light bulb questions are great tests of students' understanding of Kirchhoff's laws because the brightness of a bulb is directly related to its wattage. How many power, how much power, how many watts it uses. The bulbs below are identical. Which bulb is brighter? Hmm. 
Oh, explain your answer using principles of physics. First thing I would do is I would say, you know what? If they're both identical, I would say R and R. I think I did. Oh, yeah. I turned it on for my triumph. I did. I had to. Take that, YouTube. With me so far, they'd have the same resistance. Not only that, Zach, how high? If I go like this, does that let me get to the ground? How many volts must I lose going through here? How many volts must I lose going through bulb B? Do they have the same voltage? Say yes. Do they have the same resistance? What can you tell me about their currents then? If they have the same current and they have the same voltage, what can you tell me about their power then? So here's my explanation. Same I, same V, same R. Therefore, and you know what? Same power, and I'll go brightness. You know what? I should probably say and P equals VI. I'll put the equation that I used. Okay. The other thing you could have done, Rob, if you didn't like the algebraic version, is you could make up reasonable numbers. First of all, how big is the battery? I told you, how many volts? You could say, I'll let each resistor be two ohms and actually crunch it. If you did that, you would find, you'd be able to find an actual current as a number. And you could actually then find V times I as a number. And you would find it's the same wattage in both of them as a number. I, of course, had to do it algebraically because, you know, nerd. Two bulbs below are identical. Which bulb is brighter? Well, if they're identical, they each have the same R. Is there anything else that's the same about these two? What can you tell me about the current in each of these bulbs? Different or the same? What? You're right. Remember, current is how many skiers. They all left here. Is there any other junction for them to go through? Nope. They got the same I, they got the same I. What else must be the same? If you have the same I and you have the same R, what else is the same? In fact, you know what? I think they must each lose five volts so that I can lose a total of 10 since I gained a total of 10. Same explanation. I would write the same thing. Same I, same V, same R, power equals V times R. Same, same power. Okay, so these are nice using principles of physics right to explain questions. What's your homework? You need to practice this. I'm going to give you a bunch because you want to reach the point where these take you about 30 seconds or less. Like it wants to be almost. Hey, I see that. Ah, ah, good. Yep, yep, yep. Good, good. Boom. So, number one. Two, three. Four is good. Five is tricky. It's a light bulb question. See if you can reason it out or make up reasonable numbers. Six is good. Seven is good. Eight is good. Nine is good. Yep. Ten. I'm going to assign a lot. Eleven. Twelve is good. 
I'll skip 13. Whew. Meh, 14, meh, 15, meh, meh, I'll leave those ones. These are using that ratio trick, which really I hardly ever use. I'm not a big fan of. 